Hey guys, welcome to the channel. In this video, we are going to learn about graceful shutdown in GoLang. This is a pretty common pattern in Go where we leverage the power of channels to pass signals around and consume them to initiate shutdown. Let's go ahead and initialize a directory first. We will make a folder called graceful shutdown for this video. Let's go inside the folder. We will open this in the Visual Studio Code Editor. You can see that the project is empty as of now. We will go back to the terminal and initialize a Go module. So Go mod init, graceful shutdown. This will initialize a Go module. As you can see, we have a new file created, go.mod. We will go ahead and create a file called main.go where we will keep all our code. For this repository, we are going to have only a single file which is going to execute and that is main.go. But it is always a good idea to initialize a Go module whenever you can, especially if you are writing a library or something. So let's think about what our program would look like. Basically, it's a very simple server and it has only two methods start and stop. Start is a method defined on our server, which is going to start the server. And in this case, it would be a simple for loop, which will print that the server is up and running. While stop is a method defined on our server and it is supposed to stop the server. So it will actually shut down the server. Let's go ahead and initialize those. We will create a start function, but before that I will go ahead and create a server struct. This is an empty struct for now, but we will come to that later. I will also go ahead and create a function called new server, which is going to return a pointer to the server, a, a pretty common practice in Golang. Now the method start will be actually defined on our server. So it's a method for our server start. And for now, I will just keep a simple for loop here and it is an empty for loop. But at a later point of time, I will print a message here. For now, I will go ahead and create a function called stop. That is another method on the server. We will implement this function later. Let's go ahead and implement the start function. So this function is simply printing a message that the server is up and running fmt.println server running. I think this should be enough for now. Also, we will sleep for a fixed interval, which is two seconds in this case. And the idea is that when the server is started, it will print that the server is running, it will sleep for two seconds and the loop will continue. We can also remove the select statement because it is not needed as of now. I will now go ahead and implement the main function. In this function, I will hold it for some time using this empty select block. Although this is kind of a hack, but we will remove it later. I will also initialize a new server using the new server function. So S is the new server that we got, or S is the server that we got, and it is actually a pointer to the server. I will go ahead and call s.start. This will start the server and I will go ahead and do this in a go routine. So I will just add the go keyword before this. This will run in a background in the go routine. Because the idea is that we don't want this for loop to block any further calls. Now I will wait for, let's say 10 seconds. And after that, I will go ahead and call s dot shutdown. So I will shut down the server after waiting for 10 seconds. If you just look at this function, it returns a channel and this channel will in, in a way return a signal after 10 seconds. So this code will go ahead and execute anything that is after line number 14. 
This is also equivalent to time dot sleep, but I like the syntax much better than time dot sleep. The main routine will wait for 10 seconds before executing any call furthers. And note that the server is already started and running in the background. So I will go ahead and call s.shutdown, which is going to shut down the server. Now let's go ahead and implement the shutdown function. I will print the message that server shutdown is called. We will go to the terminal and run this function, go run main.go. You can see that the messages are bring, being printed. The server is running and it is printing the message every two seconds as it is supposed to do. After some time, like after 10 seconds, it calls server shutdown. So that function was called, but we can see that it did not affect anything. The server is still running. So let's go ahead and actually implement the shutdown logic. Let's go ahead and implement the shutdown logic. As you can see, shutdown and start are actually functions or methods defined on our server struct. So we need something inside the server struct that connects these two functions. I would say that it is actually a channel. Let's go ahead and create a quit channel, which is of type int inside the server struct. Also, we are going to create a buffer channel here. The idea behind buffer channel is that it won't block. So if you push a value to an unbuffered channel, it will block until that value is received from the channel. But in case of a buffer channel, you can simply go ahead and push the value and you don't have to block because it will be the case, not here, but in most of the cases and almost in all of the cases, it happens. It quite so happens that after passing the signal to the channel, you have some other logic that you need to process. So that logic won't be processed until and unless the value is read from the channel. So that is why we use a buffered one where we pass the value, we are unblocked, we can keep executing the function calls after that and the value will be read at any point of time. In the shutdown function, we will pass a value one to this channel indicating that we are going to quit. Now this value is passed to the channel, but it won't do anything unless we read that value. This is why I was implementing a select statement inside the start function. Let's go ahead and write a select statement with two cases. So in the first case, when we receive a signal from the quit channel, we would be actually quitting the server. For now, we will simply print that the server is shutting down. And when we don't receive anything from the channel, the default would still print that the server is running. After that, we will go ahead and close the channel because we don't want this channel to be used after this. Although there is a small bug in this implementation, but we will come to that later. Let's go ahead and run this on the terminal. As you can see, the server is still running. It is still printing, printing the message server running after every two seconds. And after some time, we will get the message that shutdown server called. So shutdown works, but hey, we have got an error here. We can see that it panicked close of close channel. So as I said before, we have a small bug here. First of all, we are not returning from this function. So after the channel is closed, we must return from this function. So let's go ahead and write a return statement here. And also another problem is that after closing the channel, it was not returned back from this function and it tried executing this inside the for loop again. And what happened was that it tried closing a closed channel again and that was an error. 
you can you cannot close a closed channel when we run this again on the terminal we can see that the message server running is printed as usual and the message shutdown server called is again printed but but we have another error here all go routines are asleep well this was supposed to happen because we have written an empty select here so this program will never exit we can remove this select statement for now After removing the select statement, we run the program again and we can see that the messages are being printed again. But this time, after receiving the shutdown signal, the server actually shut down. We don't see anything being printed after that or any error message being returned. As a bonus step, I will actually implement this in a much better way. So instead of passing a signal to the channel, we can simply close that channel. When we close a channel, then the functionality remains same, but the idea is that closing the channel inside shutdown is much better so that we don't have to worry about closing the channel again inside the start function. After we receive a signal from the closed channel, we will simply print that the, serv the server has shut down and we can simply return. So you can see that the program works as expected, but this is much better than what we started out with. If you like the video, then consider subscribing to the channel. In the future, I will be making more such informative videos with hands-on tutorials in the same monotonous voice. So thank you and see you next time.